What's going on guys, it's Matt Jacobs here, back with another video. I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about that car video that just showed at the beginning here. I work at a car dealership as a videographer. I work two days a week, so twice a week, every single week, I get to practice making a car video. So just a little bit of context, we have a phone photographer who takes standard shots of every single car on the lot. The point of these videos is to be put on the Facebook page for the car dealership and to get people's attention so they click on the link that I put in the description of the video and get more information on the car and hopefully buy it. So that is the point of this video. It's not just like just for fun. It's to actually sell this car. The car shown in this video is a Fiat 124 Spider. It's essentially a Mazda Miata if you're familiar with that kind of car. Mazda worked with Fiat to make this car. This was actually one of the lowest trim levels so it, to, be, to be honest, the inside was was a little bit cheap in my opinion, but uh, the main thing with this car is it had a convertible roof. So I wanted to tell the story of somebody getting in the car, putting the roof down and kind of cruising down the road. And I think that's what makes this video cinematic or at least more cinematic than the other videos I was making for this car dealership. Um, by the way, I've only been working there for about a year now, not even, not even quite a year, and I'm just starting to get to the point where I'm happy with my videos, but I felt very much so at first when I was filming videos for them that it was just showing the car. It was just like, here's the wheel of the car, here's the interior, here's the exterior, but now that I've done that so many times, I wanted to have the more creative challenge of telling a story, and even if the story is as simple as a guy getting in the car and cruising down the road, I feel like if you do it in the right way, it can be done well. So so it's up to you to, to decide if this video was done well. You might be able to make something better than me or you might be a complete beginner and you want to work towards making something like this or even better than this. This is just where I'm at in my videography journey, especially when it comes to car videos. So, you know, take my opinion as it is. I let you know my level of experience and uh, yeah, if you're still interested in hearing what I have to say, let's get into it. This whole video was shot on a Fujifilm X-T3 with not this lens. <laughs> I'm borrowing this 50 to 140 from a friend to decide if I wanna buy it. It was actually all shot on the 18 to 55 kit lens. I've heard many people say that this is the best kit lens made by any camera manufacturer. And I gotta say, it really is in terms of build quality at least. All metal construction, super nice, clicky aperture even though it doesn't have uh, set stop numbers but I really love this lens and um, this is the only lens that I use on my gimbal I have a Zhiyun a Zhiyun I'm not sure how you say it a Crane 3S which is super overkill for a Fujifilm X-T3 it has a max payload of like 12 pounds so I'll never have to upgrade my gimbal is at least the the good way to look at it. But yeah, I always use this on my gimbal because I don't wanna have to change lenses to get a different focal length and have to rebalance the gimbal. It'd just be a pain in the butt. And uh, this also has stabilization in, in it. So the Fujifilm X-T3 doesn't have IBIS. So I feel like I at least need lens stabilization to get smooth, silky shots. I've tried um, 23 mil is what I usually use on this lens. I have a 23 mil prime lens, but it's not stabilized. I have tried to make a video for the dealership with that, and it was just too shaky. I didn't like how it turned out. So I always use this lens. On my X-T3, I did have two filters on the end of it. I have a ND filter, a two to 400, and a uh, quarter strength black pro mist filter. So the ND filter is great because if I want to shoot a wide open aperture and get some background blur, this goes all the way to open to 2.8 at the the wide end and then if you zoom it in the widest aperture at 55 millimeters is f4 but the nd filter is great for because whenever you have a wider aperture you're obviously letting more light into your camera so the nd filter kind of works as a pair of sunglasses for your lens to to darken your image a little bit and then the black pro mist just gives it a, a cinematic glow the highlights kind of roll off a little bit nicer and it just looks more uh, like it was shot on film than a digital camera. It takes away that real digital sharpness that maybe doesn't look as organic. So yeah, that was my entire setup for that video in terms of camera combination. Then I edited it on my 2019 MacBook Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro. So nothing super crazy going on here. No super huge cameras or crazy color grading. 
I did shoot it in F-Log, so that's another reason why the variable ND filter, because F-Log, the minimum ISO is 640, so obviously your image is really bright and the ND filter helps out. But the F-Log gives that more dynamic range, which is why the, the, the sky is nicely exposed as well as the car. I think that also contributes to the cinematic look. So yeah, that was the equipment involved. Let's talk a little bit more about the art and thought process behind these shots and my thoughts and feelings on them. So the first mistake I made here was this shot going straight in. I had my gimbal in the wrong mode. I usually use pan follow mode, which is great for up and down shots like this or tracking side to side. Um, this would have been done better in line mode, which the gimbal was, is good for going straight in and out like this. Because of that, you can see a little bit of camera shake at the bottom of the frame as I'm walking towards the car and getting this shot of him approaching it. Um, but I think it looks organic. It's not too much camera shake. I did add a little bit of warp stabilizer on top of it, which kind of saves you in certain instances because of not having IBIS. So with a combination of the gimbal, the lens stabilization, and a little bit of warp stabilization in post if you need it, you can usually get as smooth as you need. But sometimes warp stabilization doesn't work. If there's too much of a bump, it'll really kind of destroy your shot. But yeah, that's the first uh, mistake was shooting that in pan follow mode instead of line mode. I believe this was at 23 millimeters. And then the next shot here after he gets in the car is him getting the latch to pull the roof back. This was at 18 millimeters. Another reason why the kit lens is so great is it has, it has that wide end, which is great for close spaces like the inside of a car. Um, nothing much to say about that. I think it looks fine. It looks like it's a handheld shot. You can see the glow on his arm because that was uh, probably a little bit overexposed. That glow is happening because of the black Promis filter. Uh, it has like that hazy look, but it's not too over the top at quarter strength. So I, I really like that, how that looks. And then right here, this shot from the profile of the car is 55 millimeters. So the reason why this shot looks good, in my opinion, is because of the compression, um, which just gives that cinematic look. So th that's why I like the kit lens so much is because each of these individual shots, I maybe got them in the course of five, 10 minutes, but I just, you know, zoom in and zoom out with the lens when otherwise I would be changing the lens and rebalancing the gimbal for every single shot. And that's just not what you want to do. You want to be fast and efficient whenever you're making your videos, in my opinion. And then right here, him finally finishing it, putting it down. You can see a little bit of a lens flare actually, probably because of the different glass on the front of the, of the camera. It was probably more f prone to flaring. That little bit of purple right there, but this is at 23 millimeters. You can see again the highlight on the on the windshield from the sun. That hazy kind of bloomy look is from the the black Promis filter. So if you don't like how that looks, then just don't use a black Promis filter. But I I like how it looks. Yeah, right here this shot is also at. 23 millimeters. Like I said, I really like 23 mil. It's the equivalent of a full frame 35 millimeter lens, which is just super versatile. I find myself using my 23 mil more and more recently. Another thought is I shot most of this video in 24 frames per second. I generally really like to mix up my frame rates to get different degrees of slow motion. So if you're not familiar with this, 24 is kind of the baseline standard. And you can see whenever I move my hand like that, that blur is called motion blur and that happens it kind of looks like how it looks in real life with your eye at 24 frames but the reason that you'd want to shoot at different frame rates is because you then interpret that to 24 frames per second in post and that gives you different degrees of slow motion so 30 frames per second is just like barely a little bit of slow motion but then whenever you get to 60 and 120 you're getting the two and a half and five times slow motion so you can really get a much different feel for your video. The reason I bring this up is because I actually made this shot at 30 frames a second when I wish I hadn't because I ended up speeding it up in post anyway. Because um, I want, because at 30 frames per second, it kind of slowed down his takeoff in the car and I wanted that to go with the music and be a little bit more dramatic. So this is something to think about. You want to be conscious and it's hard for a long time until you've done it a bunch, but you need to kind of know in your head do I want this shot to be slow? Do I want it to be regular motion? Like it's it's really hard to keep track of all of that on top of you thinking of your focal length and getting the right exposure and getting a smooth shot. Like there's a lot to keep track of. So the only thing you can do is practice it a bunch in my opinion. And uh, yeah, that's just a thought. And then right here, this is the 18 millimeters. This is just the pan follow mode on the gimbal. Really nice tracking shot. So um, you can see right here, 
the car is out of focus. So I'm gonna get some flack for this, I feel, from the filmmaker purists, but whenever I shoot on my gimbal, I use autofocus, continuous autofocus all the time. So I'm not quite there yet in terms of technicality. And like I said, it's a lot to keep track of already, let alone try and focus as well. Um, I guess I just need to figure out how to connect my gimbal to my camera and just get on it. But yeah, um, I was using autofocus, so it lost focus for a second. Most people are gonna watch this on their phone. It's gonna be so small, they're not gonna be able to tell anyway. Plus, the whole, everything else is motion blurred because of the moving shot being at 24 frames per second. So it's not that big of a deal in my opinion. The point comes across and it doesn't look that bad. But just, uh, just something to think about. If you're shooting on a gimbal, maybe use manual focus. But I do a lot of projects and use autofocus all the time. And what I usually do is because I, I leave a buffer because I know sometimes autofocus will fail, especially if it's like a one take video of something like somebody performing a song. I'll just have multiple cameras, some of them on tripods. And then if the autofocus fails for a second, I'll just cut to the other shot. And I've never had anything that has been unusable yet. But for a video like this, where your only camera is your gimbal, maybe um, having manual focus is something to think about. And then right here, this is at 35 mil. The car's super blurry going by, you can see. Another mistake here, I wish I would have had a tripod on me when I made this shot. You can see after the car passes, the weeds in the foreground kind of wobble. It kind of works here because it looks like the wind caught the camera after the car passed. It just so happened that my shake happened after the car went by, but um, if you have the time and means and resources, definitely take a tripod along. If you're doing a shot like this where you're trying to hold it completely steady anyway, you might as well have a tripod instead of trying to just hold your gimbal there because it's not gonna work out completely, you know? Right here, I use some speed ramping. I believe this is at 23 mil. I like how the clouds look in that. Again, that's from using the ND filter and shooting an F-log to get lots of dynamic range. Like I knew I wanted to speed ramp this because I wanted the inside and then the far back, but I didn't want it, the clip to be like 15 seconds of me slowly going back. So what you do is you shoot it in 24 frames. so you can speed it up without losing a bunch of frames. Um, that's another thing to think about when you're mixing your frame rate. Say if I shot this at 60 frames per second and I wanted to speed it up, in order to get that 60 frames per second to be even faster, at some point your program just has to ditch certain frames so it can look a little bit choppier. So if you're planning on speed ramping your clip, shoot it at 24 frames and then when you speed it up, it'll look smoother than something that was shot at a slower motion. Right here, like I said, I used autofocus. So the 124 Spider, what it going into focus, I just put my hand in front of the lens at minimum focus distance and moved it out of the way. I have my autofocus at a slow pull, so it looks like a nice cinematic uh, focus. You can see when it does focus on the car, there's a little bit of dirt there. So maybe I should have taken uh, matters into my own hands when it came to cleaning the car. I took it to the detail shop at the dealership and they said they cleaned it, but to be fair, they were short staffed maybe I should have cleaned it. So there's another mistake. Definitely, if you're gonna get an, especially an up close shot of a car, make sure it's clean, you know? And then yeah, final shot right here. This was at 120 frames per second, so five times slow motion after you interpret it to 24 frames. Um, at 35 millimeters, so a little bit of compression, which looks great when you're at the front corner of the car, kind of flattens it all out and makes it look like a car commercial a little bit. Using pan follow mode, basically, which is great about my gimbal, is I can like set my camera completely on the ground and then pull it up and the camera will stay looking forward in pan follow mode. So it'll be down on the ground like this. And then as I bring it up, the camera will continue to look like that. <laughs> so it looks great whenever you're shooting at 120 frames per second and you're getting a shot like that. That's This is a standard shot I always like to get whenever I do a car video. But yeah, those are my thoughts on that, my equipment involved and the creative process. The only other thing I have to say is I shot all this and then before I edited any of it, I kind of got a feel for how I wanted the, the video to be. So I went to Soundstripe, which is uh, my music service where I download my music. So yeah, I hope this was entertaining. I hope you learned something if you're just starting out like this. And I hope you can teach me something. If you've been doing car videos longer than I have, let me know something maybe I didn't point out or just bring something to my attention. Maybe I can incorporate it in another video in the future. 
Um, that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching. Sorry that I sound a little bit sick. I am. I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning of this video. I've done a couple takes of this video, so a little bit stuffy. Yeah, leave a like, leave a comment down below. I want to hear from you. That's all I got to say. Bye, guys.